An imperfect situation also creates an imperfect sight picture. So the question is, can you still hit that threat while you're in that situation when you're being attacked? I got a drill that'll show you how to build confidence and still be able to hit that threat, minimize that arc of movement coming up. Everybody, it's Bishop Beaver Tactical POV. Thanks for tuning back in. I've got a video today, and actually I'm going to do it in uh, in a series. So um, we're working on laying this out of all the drills that I do in my CQC Pistol 101 course. So stay tuned for that. This is just the start of it here. I think this is uh, somewhere along the line of uh, the third drill. I really, I'm thinking I'm going to put the first one in because the first one's just a refresher uh, drill that comes off the back end of my CCW course here. And it's just a refresher getting started into the advanced course. So it's kind of a warm up a little bit. And the, uh, but I do have one ahead. The problem is drill number two takes two people, at least two people. Don't have anybody here to help me out today, but it's all right. I'll go right in here and two, uh, I think this is drill three, somewhere along the line in there. Either one. If I got the number screwed up, oh well, it doesn't matter. It's 11 drills inside this entire course, so it's a nine hour day. But uh, before I get into it, what I'm talking about here is uh, before I start, make sure you uh, hit the like, subscribe. Also, you can share my content as well. So that way, hit the all, all notification, that bell for it so you get notified every time my videos come up. And uh, truly appreciate it. I appreciate you guys, even uh, my other subscribers and any of you guys new here to my channel. This is what I do. I do uh, tactical drills here based on the civilian side of it for concealed carry and everything else for larger individuals and uh, product reviews as well. So I see if it ever, if it works out for you, I give my honest opinion on everything. I don't pull any punches at all. Things I like, I like a lot. Some things, even the stuff I like has flaws. And then some of the stuff that I wouldn't recommend anybody because if I don't carry it, I wouldn't recommend anybody else carry it. You know, if it's, if it's really trash. So you get an honest review out of me, but on to this drill. Now, as I said, in an imperfect world, there's things that we have to deal with. We have to overcome distractions and everything uh, that goes along with a violent attack. Also, there's a thing too, as far as being able to still hit this threat while your sights are moving. It's, it's what you see and what you don't see. So this drill is called a dynamic deviation drill. I've gone through it before, long time ago. And it's an excellent drill to get you to have, or I should say to build confidence in you being able to still see the threat, minimize arc of movement as much as possible over practice and time and more shooting, and still have the confidence to hit that threat that's attacking you. So the thing about it is, is people get carried away with the fact when you're standing static, target is static, and you're sitting here drilling holes like this, okay? This is marksmanship accuracy. Marksmanship accuracy means nothing in the real world. It means nothing. Because you can sit here and drill holes like this all day, great. All that's saying is that your five fundamentals of accuracy are on point. That's it. Now, in the real world situation, combat accuracy is what you want, and that involves movement. So anytime when you're on the move, you need to have skills and practice over and over in order to be able to still hit that threat and still hit it in the high, in the torso area, in the combat zone right here, and aiming for kill zone here to stop this threat. So this gets very, very difficult once you're on the move, okay? Whether the target's moving, you're moving, or both of you moving. Being combat accurate is the goal. That's very hard to get. But I have a drill here that's designed to help give you confidence that you can still hit inside this area here with the slight drill that you can practice. You can practice this at the range too. I know some people, some do practice certain drills at the range that you can do, some things you can't do, such as draw, because I know a lot of indoor gun ranges won't allow you to draw from your holster. It's a liability issue, safety and, and liability. So I totally get it. But there are things that you can practice instead of basically just shooting silhouettes and trying to drill holes. Okay, yay, all right? I get that when you want to keep your fundamentals tight, that's the goal, get your fundamentals, your five fundamentals of accuracy tight. But things like this, you have to consider that being on the move, 
this, once you start moving and the target starts moving, this turns into this. It spreads out. So I'm going to show you this drill here. Try this at the range and, uh, and, and practice this over and over and over again. So let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, I'm roughly about five yards off. Really don't need to be any farther than that. Now, I understand you might have to back it up a little bit because I do understand that some indoor gun ranges won't allow you to shoot that close. Some uh, have to have you at at least 20 feet or 21 feet, maybe 15 at the most. Some won't allow you to shoot this close. So I get it. So if, you, if your range is that way, you're going to have to back the target off just a little bit. But roughly, this drill really shouldn't be run any farther than about five yards off because... I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So right here, as far as what I'm doing, I'm going to extend out and I'm going to drop the sights directly in the A, in the A box down in the bottom left. Now, the thing is, is in my course, I've got three different types of commands for this. So I'll say either circle. So that means you'll just move this around in a circle. Then I'll say threat. Okay. As soon as I say threat, it's one shot, one fire. I'll say another command, figure eight. So what I'll do is I'll move my sights in a figure eight, in a figure eight motion. Then I'll say thread again. At the same time, when I say the figure eight, you wanna keep the sights inside the box as much as possible, but I'm moving them, but I'll make sure they stay inside the square. So then the third command I'll give is an infinity. And an infinity symbol is just a figure eight on its side. So I'll say infinity. So it's the same thing. Circling in, call out threat. As soon as I call threat, press that trigger and fire. Now, as you can see, each shot that I've made, every time I made the shot, my sights were moving, okay? They never stopped. I just pressed the trigger inside the box. So it's the same thing. I'll call out circle again, and I'll sit here and circle, keeping the sights inside that square. Threat. Okay, there's another shot. Figure eight. So then I'll... Make sure I'll turn these sights into a figure eight. Draw a figure eight inside that box. Shoot thread again while it's still moving. Then I'll say infinity. Now I'll turn it on a sideways eight, infinity. Call thread again and make that shot and still keep those sights moving. So the thing about it is, is what I'm trying to say with this drill, that each time that I shot, my sights never stopped moving. I moved them intentionally and pressed the trigger. Even when I fired, my sights were still moving. If you see my site stop now, it's because of the video, because I'm trying to demonstrate this and explain it. But as I said, as you practice this over time, what I'm doing is controlling my sights no matter what. If it's a circle or if it's a figure eight, either way, how draw or an infinity, either way, I'm controlling these sights and keeping them inside the box, what I see. So that means you see what you don't see. So like I said, under threat, under the command, it's always controlling this arc of movement as much as possible because, as I said, in a violent attack, you will be moving. Those sights will be moving. You'll get tunnel vision from just primal fear itself, adrenaline, everything else. Your eyes will be locked in on that threat that's attacking you right now. So that means what you see is a threat attacking you. What you don't see is your front sights because your eyes cannot physically focus on a threat that's that you are scared to death of at that moment and still focus on the front sights to make that accurate shot it's impossible the eyes can't focus that distance if he's 11 feet your sights are right here he's 11 feet that's hard for you to focus on this changes the line of sight and focus on this and still hit that threat you're scared to death you're gonna be looking at that threat tacking you trying to make him stop so this builds the confidence as far as understanding how to minimize your arc of movement with the dynamic deviation drill. So try this if you got a chance to do it anywhere in a range if they allow you to do it. Give it a shot. Work on it. Practice more and more and more and more over. Okay? You'll get better at it if you don't start. Just keep practicing. You'll get better at it. So, guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, like I said, like, share, subscribe my content. I'm here all the time doing these drills. Weather's starting to break. You guys can come and get into my CQC Pistol 101 course. It is scheduled for every Saturday where I'm at. This is my brand, Tactical POV's brand. So this is my business deal. These are my drills that I've put all together here, and it's an awesome handgun course. Trust me, your CCW course is not enough. You need to get more training. You need to get more. If you think when you got a CCW, I talk to people all the time, and they say, yeah, you know, I think about getting some training later on. And it's like, and they blow it off and put it off. But the thing about it is, 
you will never get all of this training and so much more in advanced training. You'll never get this in a CCW course. All you're doing is just get taught the state laws, what you can and can't do. Come out here on the range. Some of them barely have you shoot anything. If you're shooting paper plate or shooting any damn thing else, they're really not even teaching anything on the range. On the range. Then they tell you, qualify, give you a certificate and pump you out the door. Take your money, pump you out the door. You walk out with this much knowledge. Basically, just what you can and can't do. As far as anything advanced to survive a violent attack, you don't know any of this. They're not going to teach you this in a CCW course. Not enough time in a day to do it. So, and as I said, this thing goes beyond your concealed carry. This is definitely elevating your skill level way higher for you to survive that violent, the violent attack. So, guys, I appreciate it. And as I always say, you are responsible for your own safety.